There you go. Thorn in the flesh. I did a lot of reading about the thorn in the flesh over the years because this is what God gave me when I was ready to quit. Now, Father, let me just tell you what happened. I was in the woods and I said, God, I go to the woods and pray every day. And I was in the woods praying. And I said, God, if this is the way you treat your people, then I want no part of it. Go ahead and consider this my resignation from the ministry. Consider this my resignation from Christianity. I rather not talk to you anymore. I did that. And I got I started walking to the house and I found this little property to go check the mail. So I went to check the mail and there was a tape, a preaching tape. As far as I know, I didn't even order it. It's in the mail. So I take it and throw it in the front seat of my car. I was working second shift. So I get in my car to go to work, and I said, well, here's the tape. I just want to listen to it and see what it's got to say. And I put it in. And when I put it in, the man said, there was a time that things got so heavy on me that I told God, I quit. I kid you not. That's what the tape said. I said, well, did you ever feel like not talking to him again? He said, as a matter of fact, I said, God don't even talk to me anymore. I went, whoa. And so I said, I better listen to this guy. And so as I started listening to him, he said, but God showed me what he was doing is he had me in the pressure cooker because he knew I would already climbed up very high in him, but I couldn't get any higher until I got in the pressure cooker. Until I got hit hard. Before I got hit hard and got hit, hit and, and got put on the ground and wheel, I could not grow anymore. So God's way of making me grow was not by giving me everything, but was by letting everything come on me. He said, I'm glad God did that. And I said, okay, God. I pulled out my resignation. I don't quit. I'll keep talking to you. But it still hurts. And so, I kept on working for God, never stopped, never stopped. But over the next couple of months, God started showing me something. I started reading about this. This is the scripture. Paul's thorn in the flesh. As I began to study Paul's thorn in the flesh, I began to watch all these assumptions of what it was. In Galatians, it says, see how large a letter I write with my own hands. Paul had a slave that would stay outside, and this slave would do all the right for Paul. So when he was in jail, and so this time he was writing to the Galatians, he's writing with his own hand. And the reason he's writing with his own hands is because he's angry at the Galatians because they're backing down on Christianity and, and trying to get religious, back into religion. And so he's angry, and he's writing to the Galatians, and he says, I write this with my own hand. Look at here. And he even tells them, some of y'all love me so much that you even pluck your eyes out and give them me. So, so in, my own, in my own mind, I would say his foot in the flesh was his eyesight. But then, there's some of these guys I read behind and said, well, his, his problem was it was women. That he had a woman in their report. I didn't see that anywhere. But I didn't see about the eyes. Then there was somebody talking about, well, he had to put up with in his mind every day as he's trying to help the church. In his mind, he kept hearing about how bad he'd been. And Satan took his past and beat him up with his past while he was trying to work for God in the present to keep him from having a future. Ding, 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 ding. Beat him up with his past to keep him from having the present and stopping the future. And so whatever it was, he never said what his thing was. And the reason is because if one of us had the same thing that he had, then we could actually get haughty minded and say ourselves, well, I got the same thing Paul had. I just me to do what I supposed to do. So Paul has never, ever revealed what his thorn of flesh was. You know, Jesus never wrote any, never wrote, wrote anything. The only time it records it right was one time when he was writing in the ground for those women that woman was being stoned. Because if we had Jesus' writings, we would hold that and never listen to anything else. They had a little piece of paper. Don't know where they buried Moses, because they would have taken Moses and made him a God. Made his, made his grave a God. So again, God a lot of times leaves things out. Not so that it's a mystery to us that we can't understand it, but that we actually can understand it better. By not knowing what the thought is, just knowing that, watch this. Well, here, here it is, watch this. Here what it is. It's exactly what it says. It's, a, it's Scott. How many's ever opened up a scallop shell? Got hit by a scallop. <laughs> All right, scallop or scallop or scallop. 
What it means is actually a pointed thing. That's what it means. And, and, and so here's this pointed thing. Uh, a matter of fact, here's what it does. This, this is exactly, this is the Hebrew and the Greek all together here. Watch this. It is a bodily annoyance or disability. It's a pain that bothers us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. There's not a person in here that doesn't fall in one of those categories. If you tell me you don't fall in any of those categories, I'll tell you then you're not getting close enough to God. God did that for a purpose. Amen? So, so here he is. He does this thing. Paul prayed that his storm be taken away, but God responded, let the pain remain. Paul's good for you. Mm. I remember training when I was being a football coach with D.C. and Daniel, and they said, Daniel, we had enough. And I said, I ain't let your dad down to be coach. Get right down to give me some more. And they go, Daniel, you know, you know I can't take it. I said, I know you can't take it, but you will when you get through this. Get down and do it again. They go, Daddy, I'm your son. I said, no, you're my player right now. I'm your coach. Now, do what I said. Give me another one. Give me some more laps. Whatever it was. Do something. Why? Because I knew there was more in him or in them than they were giving me. And so because there was more in them than they were giving me, then I had to challenge them. And so if you think about the thorn in the flesh, it's not an insult. It's a challenge from God. Wow. There's a challenge. You know, uh, uh, in, in Vietnam, they had something called punji sticks. It's this, this, this uh, point of thing. It also refers to over in Vietnam when they had punji sticks. They would dig holes in the ground, and then they would put these, these punji sticks. These punji sticks would be in the ground. They would have real sharp points on them, and they had poison on them. And as a booby trap, some of the guys would walk around, they would fall in this hole, and they would get jabbed with these, or uh, uh, impaled with these punji sticks. Some of these guys, it would actually kill them, and others, it would just make them wish they were dead. I even read one place where a guy got stuck with a bunch of stick and begged his comrades to kill him. It was in so much pain. The Romans did the same thing. I remember when I used to live in Braveheart, the Mel Gibson. You remember when they brought the horses and started charging and they reached down and they pulled up punchy sticks. And they stopped the advancement of the enemy. That's what's going on. If you've got a thorn in the flesh today, that's what's happening. You're advancing and Satan's pulling up bunch of sticks. The thorn in the flesh. He wants to keep you from coming forward. But God says, I'm going to use it to make something beautiful out of these people. So now, let's go a little further here. And this, see, this is a Christmas gift. Some of y'all going, I don't want to have any more presents from you then. <laughs> He's going through this thing. He says, God, you got to help me. God, this is not looking